You're terrified that eating more is gonna make you balloon overnight. You finally started eating more, you finally started working out less. Your body is tired, but still no period. Like it's been missing for months, years even. But every time you increase food, the panic hits. Is this too much? Am I binge eating? What if I gain more weight? Will this ever stop? How much weight do I have to even gain? Girl, girl, I got you. I got you. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because I talk about periods a lot. Specifically, hypothalamic amenorrhea. I love saying that word, recovery. So if you're on that road, make sure you follow the journey. And in this video, I'm going to break down the science of hypothalamic amenorrhea, why you wanna eat more, and the science as to how fat gain actually happens, because I promise you, you don't gain 10 pounds in a week, okay? On top of that, how does your body even use energy? And what happens during weight restoration that I have experienced, and I have experienced through many clients that I have helped get their cycles back, get them regular, and then head into a sustainable cutting phase if they want to. My goal is for you to click out of this video knowing exactly how powerful eating more for your body is and that your body won't suddenly gain fat. So what is water? What is glycogen? What's fat? And what's simply your body just coming back online? And if you're new here, my name is Haley. I'm a women's health coach and I help women just like you get their cycles back, get them regular in a relatively quick time, and then chat about aesthetic goals if that's something that you want to do. However, a lot of my clients also just are happy with where they're at because body image is better, we're loving ourselves, and they want to transition into intuitive eating. So it's completely and solely up to you and where you're at at that point. By now, I've coached hundreds of women out of and under fueling. Many started where you are, can't stop tracking, or unintentionally under eating, or intuitively under eating, terrified of rest days, can't take a break, cortisol dysregulation, you name it, it's a whole trifecta. And the difference between those who heal and those who stay stuck is understanding. Knowledge is so powerful, but it's not as powerful as application. So I don't want you to watch this video and just go watch another video on how to get my period back because it doesn't matter unless you apply the action to it. So if you take anything out of this, go take some action. So let's hop into the video. This is what's happening to your body. Your body is in low energy availability. So when you are under eating and over exercising, your menstrual function shuts down to conserve energy. And when your intake falls below 30 calories per kilogram of fat-free mass, that's when we start to see some menstrual irregularities. So when intake is too low, your brain stops communicating with your ovaries and basically switching your reproductive system off. However, you can also experience digestive issues, sleep issues, poor mental cognition, skin issues, you name it. Because when your body is conserving energy, reproduction is just one of the elements it's gonna take from. And this is not your body hating you. It's not against you. It's not working against you. It's just here to survive. That is its sole purpose. And so it's protecting you because essentially it thinks that it's in a famine state and reproduction is not safe. So it's not gonna put the added stress of a potential pregnancy on you if your environment is deemed as unsafe. Okay, now we've laid that out. Let's get into what's actually going on when you do increase calories, when you do increase food, and why it's super important. So the moment you start to refeed, your energy availability increases. Your hypothalamus is like, okay, I see you. I see some food, I see some energy. I can allocate this to different buckets of life. So hormone pulses restart. Thyroid and leptin levels rise, and your metabolism speeds up. Studies have actually showed that your resting metabolic rate can rise 10 to 20% once women leave that deficit. And so you might be wondering, oh my gosh, Haley, I did that and now there's five pounds plus on the scale that I don't know what it is. And this is me telling you, it is water and it is glycogen. Because hopefully you have increased your carbohydrate intake and with each gram of carbohydrate you eat, three grams of water is retained. So that three to five pound weight gain overnight is not fat, it is water and it is glycogen and it is your body refueling. Okay, now that's out of the way. Let's talk about metabolic adaptation and how that whole thing plays into this. So metabolic adaptation is essentially what you hear about starvation mode where your metabolism decreases because you are under eating. And yes, there is truth to this. 
However, one thing that I want you to know is if you jump your calories to maintenance for your body, it is scientifically impossible for you to gain fat in without a calorie surplus. It's, it's impossible. The reason I like to take a slower approach with my clients is because just slapping 500 calories on your current intake is just going to make your mind go crazy. So rather than that, do about 100 calorie increments every one to two weeks to make sure that you are progressing in terms of closing that energy gap, but it's not mentally overstimulating. So with chronic dieting, which is probably what you're doing right now, we're getting out of that and with feeding yourself more, your leptin levels are going to increase, your thyroid hormone is going to increase, and indirectly your NEAT is also going to increase. So we do just naturally move more when we're eating more because you have more energy. And that is one of the first signs that you'll see is that your energy levels are so much better. Not only that, your digestion is going to improve because again, your body has more energy to allocate to these different processes. And I know it's such a scary thing to eat more when your digestion is crap and you feel really bloated, but the solution is to eat more so your digestion has the calories and the energy that it needs to move food through your system. You, think, you can think about metabolism like a dimmer switch. You turn it down, everything kind of down regulates, you turn it up and the light becomes brighter. And I think we all like to think that we can outsmart our biology, but you cannot, my friends. And it's been shown many times, studies on female athletes who don't have cycles, when they start to increase their food, they also start to have this domino effect of digestion improving, bone density improving, mental cognition improving, performance improving so it's not all bad and I think that diet culture has really negatively impacted our mindset towards eating more specifically for women because we were just taught that as women you're supposed to be small and that is how you're valued but one plus two is three so I should diet forever that's literally the process that I went through um, however that's completely wrong and I'm here to tell you that you sh should and deserve to eat and you deserve to feel good and have your reproductive system healthy and functioning properly. Okay so how is fat gained? This is very important. Fat gain like fat loss requires sustained calorie surplus. Keyword here sustained. If you went over your allotted whatever arbitrary number you have inside of your head, um, number of calories or macros or food or whatever for the day or you feel like you overate, one session of overfeeding does not impact your fat mass whatso freaking ever, okay? It's a sustained, prolonged process. And so in recovery, the extra energy is first allocated to your brain, to muscle repair, to bone remineralization, Say that 10 times fast and reproductive hormones in fact in some studies women have returned to menses without even gaining more fat and i think this is a testament to the fact that fat mass is one part of the puzzle and if we can relate this back to what i said before being in an energy deficit fat mass is just stored energy it is not the end of the world you all need a certain percentage of fat mass typically that's anywhere from like 20 to 27 percent for women um, to be healthy and reproductive and so going from the leanest version of yourself to a healthier version of yourself we can feel quote unquote fat however it is a healthy range to be in and that is why i like to marry up the body image aspect of it as well as the physiology so rewiring our brain to not think that our whole worth is based on how our body looks and being so insecure in that and have our only self-image be on being the fit girl or being the leanest person in the room. We don't want that. We want you to pour into other buckets because you are so much more than your body. Um, but also I really enjoy having goals. I really enjoy living with integrity and living to my highest extent. Um, so I don't think it's a matter of just throwing in the towel and just giving everything up. I think there's a marrying up and things can coexist. Okay, so women need fat mass. Reason is for fertility. Typically it is stored in our hips, our bum, our lower stomach, our lower abdomen, and this is for reproductive purposes. It is very fertile and it is very healthy to have. And so what I see very consistently is fat distribution being a little bit wonky 
primarily in the midsection when you're starting out in recovery. However, once your hormones have restored, it does redistribute into those primal areas because again, women are women and we distribute fat for purposes that are fertility. And so another thing that I hope that you guys can take away from this too, is to get the number on the scale outside of your head, just get it out, we don't like her. Um, because when I was definitely going through this, I had a number of 125 pounds was in my head, I don't know why, something on the internet that I found. And I'm about like 20 pounds above that. And I'm the most confident I've ever been. I love it. I love how my body performs. I don't always love the way I look, but who does? I can respect my body. Um, so it's not about weight because within this journey too, if you are strength training, you're going to put on some muscle mass. So the weight on the scale is not a reflection of the whole story. And it can get really daunting when you step on the scale and all you see is that number go up. So if I can give you any advice, don't weigh yourself. <laughs> it's not productive in a sense that it's going to give you any value. It's just going to take away from your day. It's going to take away from your life. And I just, it's not important. So what can you expect going into this journey? You can expect if you are underweight, you can expect anywhere from five to 15 pounds, depending on where you're at. Don't take me verbatim, please. This is very subjective to where you're at. I am myself. I don't even know who you are somewhere in the world. So please take this with a grain of salt. Anywhere from that range to, to resume menses. And after recovery, your maintenance calories will be higher because you have higher body mass to sustain. So you can't just go back into under eating. Okay, so this is about teaching you. It's about teaching your hunger cues, what is enough food to sustain your body and have it function optimally. Because the last thing I want, and I hear so much of this, is your period going missing again and you having to do this again. So it's so important to keep that standard for yourself. Keep fueling because your body needs it. And when you continue to fuel your body, it will teach your body that it is safe to have your period going while you also have other goals, maybe performance wise or in your sport or running or something along those lines. It will teach your body that it is still safe to reproduce even if you do have more demanding stress from an outside perspective. That will conclude today's video. I hope you guys got some value from this. I hope you guys are clicking out of this video with your notebook and you've taken some notes with some actionable steps that you can now do and apply to your day-to-day -day life. Because honestly, the goal of my channel is for you guys to get results without even hiring me. <laughs> I know, I'm so giving. Um, but if you are struggling with the application and the gap between knowing and doing is just really large for you right now and you wanna add some speed to it, coaching application is linked below. I do not doubt that you know what to do. However, I have a process that works. I have something that I have done over and over again with every woman and, and there's so many elements of period recovery outside of eat more, exercise less. The mental aspect, the body image aspect, the self image aspect, the questions that pop up, the self sabotage, the imposter syndrome, all of this onion just gets peeled back the more you get into it and i know how confusing it is you can be in this place and be like i don't even know where to go from here because there's a million forks in the road and i don't know which one i need to go down so if that is you and you're feeling super confused fill out an application i am more than happy to see if we are a good fit to work together and in the meantime let me know what other videos you guys want to see from me because like i said i want to give you as much value as humanly possible so i will catch you in the next one